take six million twenty. Yeah. And I can't hear Luis. And Luis's audio is gone. What a great start. <laughs> He's so mad right now, dude. <laughs> He's so pissed. I don't even fucking care at this point. I just want to record this shit. Luis, are you there? <laughs> no, he's not. He's not. <laughs> Son of a fuck. I love how when we're on Skype and having casual conversations. Oh, it works perfectly. As soon as I click the record button. No, oh, fuck it. Maybe it's your record button. How could it possibly be affecting him? And not you. Let's see if he can fix it. Luis, did you fix it yet? I think he's still working on it. Alright. Well, alright, while he's messing around with that, let's, uh... Let's just... Oh my god. You gotta reread those summaries, dude. Unless you want me to do it. No, I'll do it. I'm willing to do it. Alright. Presenting the first episode on CW of Supergirl for the six millionth time. Oh. The Adventures of Supergirl. Kara finds an unknown young man lying unconscious in the pod. And young man! <laughs> what? I'm so bored right now, dude. I made a reference to the village people. Go on. <laughs> she prepares for a date with James. Just as the commercial spacecraft, the Venture, is launched into space. It suffers engine failure and descends to Earth, but Kara saves the craft with the help of from Superman. They find the main target to have been Lena Luther, the new CEO of Luther Corp. After her brother, Max, was convicted in a ceremony where she remains the company L Corp. She is attacked again by John Corbin, the assassin. Alex engages him while Kara and Clark stop a building from collapsing. Corbin reveals he is working for Lex before he is shot by Lena. Kara chooses to be a reporter for Catco, a decision supported by Cat. Kara and James decide to keep their relationship friendly. Wynn is formally hired to work with the DEO. Meanwhile, Jean reveals to Alex that he was one the, the one who found the kryptonite and decided to keep it against the wishes of Clark, who wanted to destroy it. At Project Cadmus, an unnamed woman revives, revives Corbin and begins turning him into the kryptonite-powered being called Metallo. That's it. All right, so, uh, Brandon, can you speak again? Uh, I think my mic is actually recording you now. Wait, I wasn't recording the whole time? No, you are, but... You know what? I'm just going to record you on Audacity, and if my microphone is actually recording you and it's doing a decent job, then fuck it. <laughs> anyway, I'm tr I'm trying. Wait, can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm s Brandon. The only thing I brought up was a positive good thing. Calm down. But anyway, okay. this episode was good. Sorry, guys. Superman this was su the Superman. Was Superman was amazing. He didn't overshadow Supergirl. Supergirl. Uh, special uh, effects. Martin Luther is going to become the new Maxwell, Maxwell Lord. Lord. Maxwell Lord is no longer around. Boo. Yeah. Now we have that open plot point that'll never be addressed again. And Luis, Luis, are you here? I record. He told us we can record without him. I'm about to do that. Okay. Goodbye, Luis. Bye. Oh fuck! I accidentally tried calling him again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, James Cara romance is gone. Over for now. Um, and now you're saying that it'll be Supergirl and Superboy. Monel, probably. Yeah. I'd prefer no probably. romance, but whatever. God forbid you we have a superhero show without a romance. <laughs> Even though Supergirl doesn't really have a definitive love yeah, interest. I'm really sorry about our lack of enthusiasm right now. Fuck it. Luis is gone. Luis is gone. This is the sixth million time we've reviewed this episode. Oh my god. Okay. I'm just so frustrated yeah. right now. Yeah.
But anyway, all right, so this is good. This is a good episode. My character of the week, Superman. I give this an A. A, Superman. And Luis agreed with both of us. Yeah. So. Okay, let's move on to the Metallo. I'm so sorry, guys. We're so sorry, but we have no enthusiasm whatsoever. Episode 2, The Last Children of Krypton. Bullshit. <laughs> There's like 6 million Karen. of those fuckers. Car and Clark continue operating together in National City before he decides to return to Metropolis. However, they encounter Corbin, who is turned into a Project Cadmus vertical cyborg and challenges them by the kryptonite he empowered from. The DEO deduces that there is a mole who smuggled kryptonite out. In another encounter with Corbin, another Metallo prototype goes on rampage in Metropolis without opposition. Alex finds the mole who is killed by the Cadmus leader who intends to destroy aliens. Wynn manages to build an anti-kryptonite suit for Kara and Clark, who managed to defeat the Metallos by the help of Alex and Hank, respectively. Kara promises the Cadmus leader to find her. Hank entrusts the remaining kryptonite to Clark, who, ret who returns to Metropolis. Meanwhile, Kat introduces Kara to the latter's new boss, Snapper, who does not like her and refuses to give her an assignment. Kat advises her to solve the problem herself, and deciding to leave Katko for other adventures, giving her place to James. Kara manages to prove her, her value to Snapper, who agrees to teach her. In the DEO, an alien man regains consciousness and attacks Kara. Luis, are you here now? Hold on. Yeah, he's here. All right, we got him back. <laughs> Welcome back, Luis. Don't turn on your webcam. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm not going to. Thank you. But anyway, all right, so we just gave the plot summary. Thank you, Brandon, for reading that again. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. No problem. Um, so this episode was good. It's about time we get another classic Superman villain like Metallo. The fight scenes were awesome. Uh, the story was good. Uh, I'm digging what that this... I, I like the fact that Cadmus... Um, I like how they're going to introduce the supervillains. I think I like the idea of them making the villains. Okay, now, there is a theory going around that Dean Cain's character, that's the father of Alex, will be Cyborg Superman, which would be awesome because Dean Cain played Superman um, originally. Do you think Dean Cain will play Cyborg Superman? Yes. I think it's a definite possibility. Yeah, I think so. Do you think he will be the main villain? No, I think Cadmus, the Lady Cadmus. You think the lady is okay? Well, maybe maybe the Cadmus lady would be like Ann Astra, and then they turn it over to Cyborg S Superman. Yeah, I mean, we all kind of thought that Hank Henshaw was secretly Cyborg Superman because that's who plays him, but in the New Fifty Two, Cyborg Superman is Supergirl's dad. So I think they could do something with that, and but instead make it an adoptive father. What do you you guys like that idea, or do you think that's like I like that idea, Cyborg Superman. Yeah. And plus, but a former Superman playing Cyborg Superman yeah. that'd be awesome. That's like a nerd. That's like total nerd out right there. Um, but anyway, this just like, a, just like a former Flash playing Jay Garrick. Yeah, that. Reality. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. So, um, yeah, I mean, this episode was pretty awesome. Metallo was awesome seeing a classic Superman villain like Metallo show up. Um, it was action-packed. It was thrilling. I will say this, though. I am really sad to see Cat Grant go. Yeah. I, I mean, hope she comes back, though. Yeah. Because they've been saying that she will be back every once in a while. Uh, do you think she'll be back this season, or do you think that'll be it? Yes, Probably I think she'll probably be back like halfway through the season. Yeah. I yeah, probably more, towards in the end. Yeah, around halfway I think towards the end. As the latter, I think, yeah, the latter quarter. Kind of like when, uh, where, when Henry Allen came back. Yeah. Kind of like that. Yeah, that'd be fine. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, totally. Um, so, uh, this was a really fantastic episode. I think this is my favorite episode of Supergirl ever, to be honest. 
like CW man like what do you guys think do you think this is uh, I thought this episode was better than anything season one gave us really good episode this was a solid episode and it's like I felt like CBS was really holding back the comic book side of the things even though it's a comic book show and they're like nah man CW's like nah man we're gonna give you Metallo we're gonna give you all that cool shit that you love and I'm like yes these fuckers get it (laughs) So, I love it. Uh, I'm gonna give this an A, and my character of I'm gonna. You know what? I I can't. Is there anything you guys didn't like in this episode? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Something I don't wish that happened, but oh, okay. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I don't like the new boss. Yeah. I'm not saying this because he's a douchebag. It's just I'm. I don't want to go through that whole Kara having to prove to her boss thing again. Yeah. As long as CW doesn't make it about being a woman. Yeah, go for it. Where the hell is Lucy Lane? I think she's gone. I'm. I'm fine with that. I don't. Lucy Lane didn't really offer anything besides a... Yeah, but what did she offer to the show besides a love triangle? Nothing. (laughs) So, So screw her. I'm glad she's gone. That was old CBS. This is new CW. All right. So anyway... I'm going to give this episode an A. The only reason why it doesn't get an A plus is because I'm not going to lie. I don't like Kara's new boss. I don't want to go through that plot point again, but whatever. Um, And my character is because this is most likely her last regular appearance. Besides being a special guest star, I'm going to give it to Cat Grant. It was sad seeing her go. Same. I I agree with you, Sean. Yeah. What do you think, Brent? What do you think, Luis? Pretty much all three of us, A, Cat Grant. Yeah. So, what did you guys think of... I know we kind of already gave it our letter grading, but the fight the fight scenes were awesome. They were, yeah, they were awesome. They were, I thought, they were, I thought cool. the effects were pretty. I wonderful. would. I think Supergirl, as of this season right now, I'm not. I don't watch. We don't watch Arrow, so we don't know if those fight scenes are good. I highly doubt they are. Um, mm-hmm. But I think Supergirl they're actually not. has. They're not okay. I kind of thought they weren't. Um, uh, Luis has been watching the clips on YouTube. Uh, so, yeah, super. I think Supergirl has the best fight scenes in this sh- in, the, in out of all of these shows right now. So, yeah, I think Flash still has to work on that though. To be honest, I think it's getting better though. I think Flash is improving it though. Um, okay, so we should also talk since we're on the topic of Supergirl, and I want to spice things up a bit because uh, we didn't really offer that much. Um, okay, so we it's been confirmed. That Supergirl will not be a part of the main continuity Flareoverse. So she's not going to be in the same Earth as Flash, Arrow. What's What do you guys think of this? I honestly think this is, you know, I know we were all for it in the beginning. But honestly, I think this is the smart thing to do from a logical point of view. Because it'll be way too complicated to just have the two Earths merge, and I don't think they can do it without it, without ruining continuity for the previous yeah, shows. There's some universe characters that I just can't see appearing in. Yeah, I mean, like Supergirl. how? I mean, because like in Super like Dark Archer. Yeah, like Supergirl. Yeah, I don't. You know what? I don't. I think with the Dark Archer thing, I think that might be for just the crossover the four-way crossover and that just might be yeah. it i don't think he's gonna actually teleport in supergirl's world you know what i mean yeah. so i think that's what they mean by that and i think this is a smart thing to do because i because it would ruin arrow because in arrow's continuity in the arrow versus continuity green arrow was the first superhero that showed up right i mean we're not counting the jsa or anything like that we're counting the modern day superhero was green arrow and then there was the flash but in Supergirl's continuity, they established in season one that Superman was the ma- was the first superhero and the only superhero before Supergirl showed up. So, I think I think this is a smart thing to do to keep is to keep them separate and have them cross over occasionally through 
uh, a big threat. That being said, though, I would I would like to see some of these characters actually appear in. Um, I would actually like to see Supergirl interact with the Arrow characters. I I, I would I want to see Supergirl interact with. Because, uh, Felicity. I would love. <laughs> I would love to see Green Arrow interact with Supergirl. I just want to see how much they don't like each, other. like each other. Yeah, they're not gonna like each other, and I'm like, I want to see that so bad. <laughs> I want to see that so bad. Yeah, they actually stated Oliver. They actually um, stated that Arrow and um, Supergirl are not gonna like each other. Yes. She's probably going to be like, I'm a girl, and you're a bigger bitch than me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, overall, I think this is a smart thing to do. I think Superman and Supergirl have t decades of worth of villains to use. They can use ones that they haven't been used in over 50 years from the comics all the way up to now. I think they've got plenty of material to work off with here for a long time. So um, it'd be one thing if it was... Yeah, it's it's like the Flash. I think they've got plenty of villains to work off if they're for a whole series. So yeah, in general, I'm fine with it. So I think this is a smart thing to do is to keep them separate. And plus, a lot of people who watch Supergirl don't watch the other stuff. I've noticed that's mm -hmm. sort of a that's sort of a trend. Like a lot of people who watch people who watch Flash watch Supergirl, but a lot of people will only watch Supergirl and they won't watch the other shows. And I feel like. If someone was just watching Supergirl, they get super confused as to what's going on. So, I'm fine. I'm fine with this. So, the nerd in me wants them to combine together, but from a realistic point of view, it's just not possible. So, all right, let's move on to the Flash. Flashpoint. Yeah. The disapp Flashpoint. disappointing Flashpoint. It was. All right, episode one, Flashpoint. <laughs> After preventing the murder of Nora Allen, Barry returns with Eobard Dalton to the prison and imprisons, imprisons him in a cage that happens his feet. In the new timeline, which Eobard does Flashpoint, both, both of Barry's parents are alive. Joe has a poor relationship with Wally and Iris and is chronically in trouble at work. Cisco is a billionaire tech... Magnati and Caitlin. And okay, Caitlin go back to that word. What? What is that word? What? Tech -A -G -M -A -G -N -A what? M-A-G-N-A-T-E. Magnet. Whatever. M-A-G-N-A-T-E. Did they spell magnet wrong? No, whatever. Go. Just keep going. Is a pediatric pediatric opth ophthalmologist. Yeah. Eye doctor. Children's eye doctor. Yeah, eye doctor. <laughs> There's also a new Flash in Central City called Kid Flash, struggling with his own nemesis, Edward Claret, known as the Rival. Barry begins losing his memories of the original timeline, which Eobard reveals is the result of the new timeline becoming permanent. After discovering Kid Flash is Wally, Barry teams up with him and stops Claret, but not before Wally, Wally is critically injured. Realizing that the new timeline is worse for those closest to him, Barry is forced to let Eobard return to the past and kill Nora and reset the timeline. Back in the present, Barry learns that the timeline did not reset exactly. Joe and Iris have not spoken to each other in many months. Meanwhile, Clarice is confronted by a mysterious voice and finds the message alchemy being scratched into, into his mirror by an invisible force. Do, do you guys think it's Mirror Master doing the alchemy thing in the mirror? Probably is. Probably. probably is. But anyway. Okay. So guys, we thought Flashpoint was going to be two, three episodes. Something like that, right? Mm -hmm. we, we also thought, some people thought it was going to be a whole half a season. I didn't think it was ever going to go that long, but one episode. One. Oh my god. And... The only thing... Like they said it was going to be like a couple episodes. What the hell? I know. Well, they probably meant all well, the effects of Flashpoint. No, screw off, man. I was really excited to see things that, that, that didn't happen. I wanted to see Robert Queen Green Arrow. I wanted to see Supergirl being trapped in... Uh, 
Area 51, and I know a lot of people are like, but Supergirl's not in this universe. It's Flashpoint. They can do whatever they want, and really, and just fix it. You know what I mean? So they can do that. And it's it's Citizen Cold. I wanted to see the rogues as superheroes. Stuff from the comic and the animated film that they never showed you. This This was a disappointment. I felt like the changes were fine. Wally being the new Flash, aka Kid Flash. We know he's going to become. Everything was everything except for Caitlyn was fine. Yeah, Caitlyn's change was boring. She wasn't even Killer Frost. Like what the hell? So, uh, we'll get into the Killer Frost thing in a minute. Um, but anyway, Cisco's change was okay. And <sighs> honestly, dude, if it wasn't for Yibor Thon, I probably would have rated this episode a lot lower. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Yibor Thon was so amazing in this episode. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I loved it. Honestly, I actually love that he made Barry beg him to kill his mom. Dude, he was so... Every line he said was so perfect and amazing. I'm like, Dude! I loved Her I loved Tom Cavanaugh as both Harrison Wells and Yibor Thon in season one. I'm like, This guy! This guy, I don't remember his name. Matt Lester? Matt Lester. Yeah. That guy. Yeah, man. Wow. So good. As... Oh, Matt Lester, I think. Alright, whatever. It's like Lester or something like that. Something like that. Dude, he's so good. <laughs> like, holy shit. So, uh, as for... Okay, there's a few plot holes in this. That doesn't even line up with the continuity of the show. That's well, perfectly with the continuity of what we saw in the Flashpoint comic and tell in the animated movie. Barry's gone back into time, and he's created new timelines. Remember in season two when he went back in time, and the new timeline was that Pied Piper was a member of the Flash, mm -hmm. Team Flash. Yeah. Well, how come his memories weren't being erased then? Yeah. You know, it's like when did this memory racing thing come from? I get it. It was in the book. It was in the mo animated film. But it didn't, I didn't really felt like it need, I think Barry needed a different reason to go back in time. Like, Wally West got stabbed, dude, he was gonna die. I think that was enough motivation for Barry to realize, wow, this fucking timeline sucks. Like, I don't think the memory erasing thing needed to be a thing at all. I mean, what do you guys think? No. It just felt like a waste. So, yeah. I mean, honestly, guys, Flashpoint was pretty disappointing. This 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 episode, like when you watch it, you're like, oh, it's good, and then you then you think about it, you're like, dude, so many missed opportunities. It just felt like they could have done more. Like, I can't hear Brandon right now, so hopefully he can fix it. Um, but anyway, yeah, the silver. Yes. There you go, you fixed it. And anyway, <laughs> but anyway, um, Luis, are you there? You still there? I'm still here. Okay. So overall, Flashpoint was disappointing. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. Uh, what What do you got? What did... I think I've been overshadowing you guys. What did you guys find disappointing about Flashpoint? Or if you didn't think it was disappointing, let me know why you didn't think it was disappointing. To, to be honest, it kind of focused more on Barry and Iris than anyone else. Yes. Yeah. I agree 100%. I wanted... Uh, come on, guys! This is not allicity. We haven't entered. Yeah. We haven't entered that territory. <laughs> yeah. I hope they don't. Uh, All right. So, is that what else did you find disappointing, Luis? Just so many missed opportunities. Is it just me, or did Kid Flash kind of think about himself more than others? Oh. There's one thing I, I kind of liked, uh, the identity thing with Kid Flash. Oh, yeah, why he's called Kid oh, yeah, Flash. Yeah, he's calling himself the Flash. Like, no, dude, he's Kid Flash. <laughs> no, he's Kid Flash. Yeah, he's Kid Flash. I'm the Flash. No, he's the Flash. He, you're Kid Flash. We've only known this guy for like a couple of minutes, but fuck you. He's the Flash, and you're Kid Flash. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, guys, I just thought there were so many missed opportunities. Like, don't get me wrong, this episode was entertaining... I think if you have no expectations going into this, like we did, where we know the story of Flashpoint, I think you'll be disappointed. If you 
did know this, if you don't know anything about Flashpoint, why it's such an awesome story, you're probably fine with it. Go on Netflix. Go on Netflix, or better yet, read the book. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or... This is just a missed opportunity. I'm gonna exactly. I mean, Brandon, what did you think? It it was a it was a swing and a miss, honestly. I mean, they could have done so much more with it. What do you think they should now, have one, done? One thing I am liking so far is that this season is a little bit. I mean, I know we're only a few episodes in, but it's feeling a little bit different compared to season, season two, two, which was essentially a recycled season one. Yeah, it was. It was. Like, looking back on it, season one, two is essentially season one, again. Except with yeah. in, with dimensions instead of time travel. So, yeah. um... I, I will agree with you on that, Brandon. I think... I think they did a... Uh, I like this... I like the idea... Of, we'll discuss this when we review the second episode. I like how they're getting the villains to be villains. I like that idea, like... Who, why Dr. Alchemy is... So far, he's been a pretty cool villain. Not super memorable yet, but... Uh, he's starting to... I, I think he's left a bigger impression on me than Zoom did in the beginning. So... Mm -hmm. Brandon, what would you like to have seen Flashpoint do? Do you think they should have done the Robert Queen Green Arrow? Do you think they should have explored all of the Arrowverse? I think they should have, yeah. Yeah. I think they should have they taken should have it done all and done, done that. Yeah, they should have shown the differences. They should have shown the Robert Queen Green Arrow. They should have shown Citizen Cold and the good guy rogues. All that stuff. They should have shown us more of the villains that Wally has faced. Because now, we're getting those villains. They're getting their powers back from that previous time, thanks to Dr. Alchemy and his Philosopher's Stone. But, I wanted, I, I wanted, I wanted to see... Because the only villain we got to see in Flashpoint, the only new villain we got to see in Flashpoint was the rival. Also, is it just me, or I can't believe they used the lamest villain's name ever? <laughs> More like the dumbass. <laughs> well, there are lamer names out there. The, the rival? Yeah, oh yeah. The trickster? The trickster? No, the trickster's a good name. The trickster's a good name. So anyway. We'll get to that question. Guys, we'll get to that. No, the question's a superhero. But anyway, well, not I'm, I, my guy. The guy I'm talking about is a superhero too. Oh God! We'll get to it. Oh God! Okay. It's a gay row thing. Oh, it's a, it's an arrow thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So as for letter grading and character, my character of the week easily, without a doubt, is Yeborthon. Yeborthon. By far, the I mean, best. Yeborthon. By far the best. And without him, this episode, this episode, guys, I'm gonna yeah, be, sucks. I'm gonna be a bit harsh. I'm gonna give this a B minus. The only reason why it only reason why it didn't get to C is because of Yborthon. Yborthon was definitely. definitely the best thing. What do you guys think? Agreed. B minus. B minus. Yborthon. Yeah. Brandon, you agree with a B minus as well? Okay. Yeah, Yborthon. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next episode after Flashpoint. Let's hope it. Let's hope Flash can redeem itself a bit. All right, episode two, which was called Paradox. Flashpoint Paradox. <laughs> it's funny. Don't you get it? Perry. <laughs> <laughs> per Perry. Perry. <laughs> wow, there were more timeline changes than I thought there were. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Barry learns of several changes to the restored timeline. Iris is not forgiven Joe for concealing that her mother was alive. This goes angry with him for not altering the for not altering the timeline to save his brother Dante. And his he has a new CSI partner, Julian Albert, who does not like or trust him. Barry decides to travel back to fix the damage, but he is intercepted in nineteen ninety eight by Jay Garrett. Thank God. Jay tells Barry what? No, thank God. I can't stand another no. timeline change. Jay tells Barry that the timeline never resets exactly and that he has to learn to live with his mistakes. Meanwhile, Clarice has visions of Flashpoint and locates the person responsible, Alchemy, who restores Clarice's powers and full Flashpoint memories. Barry tells them t tells the team about the timeline's alterations before confronting Clarice at an abandoned warehouse. 
Alchemy is there as well, saying that he is preparing this world for a future event. Cisco arrives and helps Barry defeat Claris, who is then incarcer incarcerated in the Iron Heights. The team determines that Alchemy is creating other metahumans from Flashpoint, who they, whom they need to track down. Cisco and Barry reconcile, as do Iris and Joe. Caitlin is secretly revealed to have gained cryokinetic powers. A.K.A. she's Killer Frost. Barry and Iris How begin dim, yeah. and Clarice is attacked in a cell. Okay, so. that's it. All right. Mm -hmm. Better than the first one. Yeah. This was better than the first one. Way better than the first way one. Way better than the first one. Um, we get to see timeline changes that... Okay, so from what we can gather is this. Everything that's happened from seasons one and two still happened except for these changes. And like I said, that is the smart thing to do so that way you don't waste other people's time. So that being said, I hope they use this opportunity to fix Arrow, which we're hearing they might, and keep what I just suggested. Now, that being said, we're going to talk about this episode. So this episode, we get to reveal that Iris West and Joe do not have a good relationship at all, which is great, which is, well, not great, but uh, in the previous episode, we at the end of Flashpoint Part 1, they revealed that uh, Barry that Iris and Joe weren't talking. Now, by the way, when they talked about how that's not funny, when they brought up the Iris thing in the last episode, I was like, did you just kill off Iris West? Mm. Like, come on, I couldn't have been the only one that thought that they would do that, that they did that for a minute. I yeah, actually thought, so like, wait, did they kill off Iris West? Dude, I was going to be so mad. I'm like, they, did, they pulled an arrow. They pulled an arrow. <laughs> they killed the comic book love interest. That's it. They pulled, that, that's it. Fuck the show. <laughs> but, um... But thank God they didn't. Um, and we get to see Barry. By the way, dude, am I the again? Barry's memories aren't affected. What? <laughs> okay, this is just gonna be a plot hole. This is gonna bother me. Fuck it, but whatever. Um, I like Julian Albert. I think he's gonna add a lot of. I think he's Doctor Alchemy. Just saying his last name's Albert, that's a very high possibility that he's Dr. Alchemy. <laughs> so, um, so, that being said, I enjoyed this. I like the changes that we've seen. They're not monumental, and they offer enough to make things different. I am looking forward to seeing the Killer Frost foreshadowing as well. I'm liking what what they're doing. And I like how they're getting the villains. I like how they're revealing that the villains, they remember everything from Flash. They remember things from Flashpoint, and it's Dr. Alchemy that's giving them their powers. So I want to see what their explanation is. Hopefully it's not a bullshit excuse. I have a feeling it's going to be a bullshit excuse, though. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm just excited. I like Dr. Alchemy. I think he's going to be a really cool main villain. To me, he's already left a bigger impression on me than Zoom did in the beginning of Season yeah. 2. So I agree. I can I can completely agree with that. Zoom, God, Zoom sucked. Like yeah, now that you think about it. Now that you think about it, Zoom sucked. <laughs> <laughs> so should have just used the straight up Hunter Zolomon version from the comics. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, all right, guys, what did you think of Paradox? A lot better than Episode One. Yeah. Way better than actually one. Yeah. So, um, what what changes were you guys most happy with? Or were you most excited to see? Hmm. Kind of a toss-up between Alchemy and Caitlyn. And yeah. Vibe. Yeah. Dude, we got to finally see Vibe. In action mm -hmm. on the field. Oh, yeah, I just realized, um, uh, last minute, I just realized. Oh, Bob was there. What a vibe. This costume. When I saw the trailer for season two, on where Cisco was like sitting down with the group, I thought I honestly thought he was like um like a drug addict. Hmm. You know. Hmm. Season like, two. In the group. Uh, I honestly thought he was. Oh, you said season two. Okay, I'm like what. No, season three. Yeah, season three. Yeah, I kind of thought that. 
Um, the whole Cisco thing. Dude, I'm sorry, but when Barry came back from the timeline and he said, Dude, I don't I didn't go back and save your brother, but guess what? I don't remember not doing that because of that stuff. So Huh. I mean, I kinda thought they dragged on the Cisco being mad thing for a while. And I should I, I was so frustrated. Okay, we gotta address this one. Okay. And this episode automatically gets some points deducted because it had Felicity in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just went like this confused the shit out of me. I'm like, wait a minute. You mean to tell me, Barry, you just changed your closest the people in your life. You changed everything or changed a good portion of things. And the first person you go and talk to is Felicity Smoke. Mm -hmm. And not only that, poor baby Sarah from Arrow, dude. Wiped from mm -hmm. existence. <laughs> Like, no, you were never born. Fuck off. It's John Jr. now. So we can have our Connor Hawk. <laughs> I mean, dude, that's so fucked up. <laughs> um, that, that, that bothered me. I'm not going to lie. I think Barry should have just said something from the very beginning. I mean, like, why Felicity out of all people? Like, really? Exactly. <laughs> like, like, really? She blew up a town. Yeah, no one's still mad about that. It'd be one thing if Prometheus... Oh, Luis, is Prometheus even mentioned in Darrow so far? Well, I, actually, there's two of them. Prometheus and Ragman. Oh my god, they are introducing Ragman? Rag, Ragman is the one from Hapenrock. Yeah, uh, for the last episode of Felicity already told Ragman that she um, killed um, Hapenrock. Oh my god. And Ragman's like... Uh... Ragman, Ragman didn't say anything, he just walked away. He's like, okay... Dude. Also, um, Ragman. Also, Ragman is part of Team Era. Yeah. Fuck this shit. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm not kidding. You blew up my town. Let me join your team. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Felicity. Okay, so this show. We're going away from magical elements. Breaks and Ragman. Yeah, I know, what the fuck? Oh, Felicity, he's standing at top now. So, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing, thank God. No, I know. You know it's... Anyway, back to Flash. Um, yeah, so... Positive things, I like the timeline changes. I don't think they're gonna mean anything in the long run. Um, but I, I enjoyed the conflict, dude. I liked seeing the changes, I liked... I like Julian Albert, dude. I think he's going to be an interesting character going forward. I totally think he's Dr. Alchemy, oh. for sure. Um, some people are saying maybe yeah, it's... Enjoy. Oh, go go for it. I enjoyed, the, I enjoyed the talk between Jay Garrick and, and Barry Allen. Yes, dude, Jay Garrick was just like, dude, dude, Jay Garrick just grabs Barry, and he's like, he's saying exactly what the audience members think. Stop fucking up the timeline. <laughs> mm. I'm like, dude, thank you, Jay. Wait, does this mean Jay? That he, like, that hard hard that he already did what you did, what Barry did. There's just no point anymore. Just live on what the consequences of what you did. Exactly. Wait, does this mean Jay Garrick is actually a part of Earth One now? I don't know. I think he's probably gonna come. Maybe he's gonna come back. I don't know. I don't know, dude. Hmm. They just brought up a plot. that, or we just got to see Earth 3. Yeah. I'm gonna go with that. I don't think they would dramatically change that. But, no, you said 1998, Brandon, right? Uh, no, yeah, 1998. Oh, I think, I think Jay Garrick is actually a part of Earth 1 now. Sweet! That means Barry's a legacy character now. <laughs> I'm down. So, uh, maybe we'll get time travel shenanigans with Jay Garrick. That'd be dope. Please don't go too crazy with it, though. Have Jay Garrett go to the future or something. <laughs> no more fucking up with the past. <laughs> so anyway. Um, yeah, that's, this is a solid episode. Uh, better than the first one. I'll say that right now. So what did you guys think? Also, what are you most ex So you're... I think we can all agree we're excited for the Killer Frost thing. I think yeah. we were all... Yeah. I was just like... Yeah, Kaylin's not being affected by anything. I think out of all the characters, she was the most disappointing character in terms of Flashpoint, and now 
when she when Barry comes back, she's now getting the most exciting thing on the show. Yeah. So, way to go, writers. Um, now yeah. the question is, do you think Kate, Caitlin will become Killer Frost for the rest of the show, or do you think she'll just be a one-off villain? I'm hoping one-off. I'm hoping one-off. I will be really mad if she's a villain throughout the rest of the show. What do you What do you think, Louise? I'm hoping, I'm hoping the reason she's a villain, the mo- her mother is the reason she's a villain. Yeah. Yeah, I think the mother's gonna go because we'll get to this later. But in episode three, you know, she she says that stuff to uh, Jesse. And yeah, Jesse Quick. Spoilers. Oh, whatever. We're yeah, gonna yeah, review it anyway. <laughs> you know, give it dropping hints about. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Letter. Uh, anything else to add, guys? This is better than the first one. This is better than the first one. My letter grade. Who? I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with A minus. The reason why it doesn't get an A is because of Felicity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's actually that's an automatic Dude, not only that, it's also a good complaint because it's like why did you go to bitch to her and didn't tell Iris, for example? Mm-hmm. Like that's the first person you should be talking to when you come back. Dumb. I'll say I like the uh the the awkward um dinner. Oh, that, yeah. Dude, Barry's so awkward, dude. <laughs> like, fucking A. Um, okay, so, yeah. Uh, who's your character, Brandon, since you brought up your letter grade first? Ooh, that was, this is a tough one. I don't feel like anyone stood out, to be honest. Not really. I, ugh. Ooh, I know who mine I is. I do have a few in mind. Okay. I'm not gonna say Bob because he was only in one like small little portion. So my the three that I'm stuck on are Jay, oh, that's... Julian, and Alchemy. All right. Between those three, I'm gonna come back to me later, and then I'll. I'll come back to you later. Of... All right, Luis. What did what is your letter grading? And if you have a character in mind, who is your character? A minus um, because Felicity. Yeah, Felicity. That, that's also just a legitimate sure. complaint. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of the, the actual plot sure. point. And who is your character? I know, like, the character's it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. God, why is it so hard? Okay, so I'm going to give my letter grading, and I'm going to give my character. Uh, I give it an A-, minus, and I think I'm going to give the... I was going to originally give it to Cisco, but then I'm like, I didn't like how they constantly brought up the brother thing. Yeah. So I, I just kind of thought... I gotta kinda, Let it go. Yeah, it's been... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, please let it go. Yeah, dude. Not like, uh, I mean, we're, at the end of the day, we're not in his situation, but I feel I feel you. Uh, he didn't have a strong relationship with his brother in this new timeline, so stop, okay? Um, no, he didn't have a strong relationship with his brother even before I the new timeline. Before. Yeah, so um, that was also a legitimate complaint, so that's why it also gets an A-, minus. not just because of Felicity, even though that is a legitimate complaint, because Felic- Barry had no reason to go talk to her out of all people. Dude, it would have been more appropriate if he went to Green Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but anyway, um, my character is Jay Garrick. He sl- he told him to stop being a fucking wussy and just accept the fact that the timeline has changed and you can't go back. And I'm like, yes, because Jay said exactly what I think we were all thinking. So, yeah. because of relatability, Jay Garrick. I'm going to go with Jay I'll Garrick. Jay too. Yeah, I kind of thought. Yeah, you all, the, all the same people. All the same people. Hey, it's fine. I I, I just... Yeah. When I remembered Jay Garrick and what he did, I went, that's right. Okay, I'm going with him. Because he said exactly what we were all thinking. <laughs> Barry, quit fucking up the timeline. I really hope... There's all this, there's this reoccurring joke that by the time the show is over, they will have visited that fucking mother murder scene like seven more times, and you'll see like seven versions of Barry, seven versions of Ebor Thawn, and it'll be like that Family Guy skit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it to you guys after this, but anyway. 
Okay. Um, but anyway, that being said, I like this episode better than the first. So, All right. let's move on to the magenta we'll one. on number three? Magenta. Female Magneto. <laughs> uh, Wells and Jesse return to Earth-1, where she reveals she has super speed from the dark matter blast. That yes! That varies powers. <laughs> Wells hope that he can have everyone dissuade her from using her powers. Elsewhere, foster child Frankie Kane de- develops a metahuman magnetic powers that manifests as an alternate personality, Magenta, who attacks her abusive foster father. Barry learns that Magenta got her powers from alchemy. She goes to Central City Hospital to kill her foster father by dropping an oil tanker under the building. Barry creates a vortex to hold the tanker in place, not being able to confront Magenta simultaneously. Wells, finally trusting J- Jesse, sends her to help. She takes over the vortex while Barry talks to Frankie into good chaining, gaining control over Magenta. Wells tells Jesse that he will just su- support her decision and presents her with her own costume, calling her Jesse Quick. Joe later shows Barry and Julian a, ver- a video of Clarice being killed in a cell by an unseen force. Meanwhile, Barry and Iris try to put, insi- put aside their vigilantism, and they are on a <laughs> date, but finally decide to take it as part of her life. That's it. Okay. Um, was this better than the last one? I think it was. Yeah. So, also, there I was no felicity in this no one. Felicity. It had Jesse Quick <laughs> and Harrison Wells. And guess what I like? The Earth 2 timeline was not affected at all. I I love that. I love it because that means the multiverse is oh, okay. Supergirl will stay the same. Thank God. Cuz a lot of us thought that they were going to fuck up every bolt thing. And I'm like, "No, mm-hmm. not necessary. Thank you." For not letting Flashpoint affect Earth 2. I'm so happy about that. Um, anyway. Dude, Jesse motherfucking quick. Finally. <laughs> like, <laughs> holy shit, dude. So, that was awesome. Um, I'm su- I, I, I liked Magenta so much, dude. I liked her so much. What do you guys think? Brandon, come on, man. <laughs> Or Luis, come on, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, the episode was pretty good. Wait, um, how, how was Wally trying to get the trigger his abilities again? He's trying to get uh, almost run over by a car. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the description really, didn't... I'll go for it. He was really hoping to get the, those speed cars, huh? Well, duh, it's Wally West, he will, dude. He'll get them eventually. He's gonna get them. I don't know why. I'm get it from alchemy. Alchemy's gonna get it. Yeah. Alchemy yes. Him, and not this whole. It takes a long time for. I think it's gonna be alchemy. Bullshit. I think it's gonna yeah, be Doctor alchemy. alchemy. Oh, that's gonna be so good. Do you think? Does that mean Wally's gonna remember being sad? Ooh. Oh, I'm excited now. Yeah, wait, how, 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 <laughs> when he got stabbed, how come he didn't fast heal? They will yeah, ex. Guys, they will explain it. Relax. <laughs> do you want my do you want my theory what? it's because Barry is the producer of the speed force which means he empowers all the other speedsters so that means since he's the embodiment of the speed force he's the only one that can heal himself I think that's a pretty good theory I'm saying so so anyway uh, the descript- yeah, the description of the Wikipedia, they didn't talk about the Wally thing. They didn't talk about that. No, they didn't. No, th- Wally no they did not talk about that. That was, that was really good. Um, I liked the conflict between Jesse Quick and Harrison Wells. I like how they're, I like how he's like, Caitlin, go talk to her. Because <laughs> Kate, Harrison Wells wants to. What do you want me to say? Yeah, what do you want, what do you want, what do you want her to say, dude? Um, but anyway, I liked this episode a lot. Um, I'm excited. This episode... Dude, this episode got me more excited than Flash... This episode was better than Flashpoint. Like, a good... I liked Magenta. What did you guys think of Magenta? I liked her. Yeah, I liked her, too. Yeah. yeah I, she's, she's, isn't, yeah, isn't she, like, uh, Wally's ex in the cut, cut looks? 
I don't know about that, but I do know that Wally and her had some form of relationship in the comic book. Uh, they're obviously not going to touch on that. <laughs> hmm. uh, this is young Wally. Um, they're still shipping uh, Wally and Jesse. <laughs> I think Kenny and already talked about that. The romance between Wally and Jesse. Who talked about that? Kenny. The, uh, the actor who plays Wally. He and, he and Lonsdale? Oh, yeah. Ah, I don't yeah. like I don't like the Jesse Quick Wally thing, man. Oof. I know it's younger Wally, and I know it's kind of based off New 52 Wally with old Wally's personality. I still don't like it. Do you think Linda's too old for Wally? Do you think that's the problem? Do you think that's why they're not going to have the canon Linda Park Wally West relationship? Maybe they just want a black a black guy dating a white girl. It would have been more interracial if it was a black guy dating an Asian girl. Cuz I we've seen too many uh black guy and white girl romances on TV lately. Yeah. It's becoming really stale at this point. If you're trying to spice yeah. things up with race, which I don't think you need to do anymore. But anyway... <laughs> anyway, yeah, I don't like the Jesse Quick Wally thing. I think it's kind of... Eh. I don't know. I just don't dig it that much, man. So anyway, um, Magenta was awesome. Julian's a huge asshole. <laughs> I think he's Dr. Well, he's a mouth boy, so... Oh, yeah, he's seven good. movies of Harry Potter. He was an asshole. <laughs> Wouldn't that be perfect? I wish you would have bet in the, blo- in the when they released the bloopers. At one point, he's gonna be like a Vodka or some shit. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um. But anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this episode was just solid, dude. I mean, what did you guys think? I know I I feel like I've been talking too long. I think it was pretty solid. What'd you think of Magenta? Like, what you like what you like about her and what you that she's kind of like the split personality like she's on one part of her like doesn't know what the hell is going on she's just like a lost little girl and then the other part is just like a bitch yeah I think Dr. Alchemy that's pretty interesting as well like he's kind of reminded me of Trajectory yeah which by the way they're reusing her costume for Jesse Quick (laughs) so anyway yeah we also get the Jesse Quick costume uh, it's just this, it's just the trajectory costume from season two. Boo! Yeah. Boo! Dude, they, you know what's ironic? What? Jesse was already wearing the comic book accurate costume when she was wearing the red leather jacket and the blue shirt. All she needed was the lightning really? bolt on it, and she that was gonna be the comic book costume. I'm like, that's all you need to do. That's one of her costumes in the comic books. All you had to do was put a lightning bolt on that same blue shirt. And you would have had the Jesse Quick costume. Seriously, I'm not even lying. Look it up. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm just. I'm, it's just one of many costumes. Um, but whatever. I think they. I think that was just a Easter egg for people to catch it. So, um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, this is a great episode, dude. Doctor Alchemy left a big impression. Like that one time he talked to Magenta had more of an impact on me than Zoom did of all season two. <laughs> dude, I'm digging Dr. Alchemy, dude. Uh, please keep Dr. Alchemy going. Dude, I think they're going to replace him with Savitar. I really do. Why? No, I don't want Savitar. Do you think they're going to cancel Savitar and be like, nah, people like Dr. Alchemy, fuck Savitar. I hope they do that. Okay. I don't want mm-hmm. Savitar, dude. I really don't. Save him for Save him for the season four villain. I don't want him now. I don't need another motherfucking speedster villain. <laughs> okay, but anyway, that being said, who is your character of the week and what is your letter grading? A. Uh, I'm giving it an A as well. Yeah, yeah A. And character. We'll... Damn. Well, they were all good, yeah, but which character yeah, they were all bad. good? gonna go with jesse all right brandon says jesse quick what about you Wa- Luis? you almost called wally that's, that's fine yeah jesse damn it i was gonna say jesse quick before you guys thought of it damn it 
I was hoping we'd get a different answer. <laughs> oh, well. How can you not get excited for Jesse Quick being on a Flash show, dude? The Flash family is being formed, dude. I want to see that iconic image of Jesse Quick, Jay Garrick, Wally West, Barry Allen racing. Just yeah, the Flash family, dude. It's going to happen. It's going to fucking happen. Um, but anyway... So anyway, uh, that's it for Flash, I think. Yep. All right. Uh, so what did we think of... Okay, before we move on, what do we think of Season 3 so far? Do we think it's off to a good start? Do we think it's off to a meh start? And would you say it's off to I a better start so than Season 3? I from Episode 1, but I'm liking it so far because it does feel... Definitely does feel different, like what Carlos Valdez said compared yeah. to the first two seasons. I like how they're, ma- I like how they're introducing the villains. Yeah. With the whole flashpoint memory thing. I like that. Remember this. Remember this. Let's hope it does not turn out like season three of Arrow. Yeah. Dude, relax. Mark Guggenheim yeah. has nothing to do with this show. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Damn it. Um. Do you guys think that by introducing Savitar, it will ruin the momentum that Dr. Alchemy is going? Yeah, I think it will. That's the thing. I'll I'll get tired of speedsters. I like speedsters because it's the Flash, dude. They're just going to be there. They're just going to be there. But I want to take a break from a main speedster villain. Save Savitar for season four. I'm serious. Just save Savitar for season four as the big bad. And if you want to use the new speedster villain who got really popular real, real quickly in DC Rebirth Comics and use Godspeed, who's fantastic, use him for Season 5. You know what I mean? Just, like... Hell. Like, you saw the term for the last episode of Season 3 of well, The Flash as a, as a cameo. Yes, dude, just oh, use him as a cameo. Episode, two, episode 1 of Season 4. Yeah, I agree with Luis. Save him... For later, don't... I don't want Savitar at all. At all, man. And another question is this, guys. I've wanted Mirror Master as a villain for a long time. I've even stated that I think Mirror Master can be a big bad, potentially. If we get the rogues. Do you think we will get the rogues? Because now we're learning that the rogues are going to be the main I villains in the Flash movie. Are... Maybe. I... Maybe. Part of me feels like they're just still gonna keep him off to the side because the new episode is gonna be called the next episode is called the new rogues oh oh yeah. well if they have mirror master that makes sense yeah because okay i could see is captain it's cold good. gonna be in that what is captain cold gonna be in that uh, i think so actually yeah okay so we might see that rogue war but between splitting the rogues between Mirror Master as one leader and Captain Cold as the other one. So we might we see, are. I think we're going to see that. Are. It's about time. So I'm excited. I think exci- he's going to go. He wants uh, Captain Cold to settle a deal or something. I think I read that in uh, Arrowverse Wiki. Yeah. I really hope um, they use Mirror Master for a long time because he's a classic Flash villain, dude. I think they need to use him for more than just one episode. So anyway, um. Yeah, I'm excited for Flash Season 3. I thought it went off to a kind of, eh, start in Flashpoint, but I think it's been... That's getting better. It's getting better. It's getting better. Please don't give us Avatar. Yeah, please. Don't do it, man. I don't even think they've casted him yet. Don't do it. You can save the Speed Force cult for next season. We will... I'm fine with it for next season. I don't... I just want alchemy. I like alchemy, dude. But anyway, let's move on to... Uh, um, Sean, how, how about Sean? How about let's move on to Ghost Rider? Oh, dude, I haven't been watching Agents. <laughs> this is watch the first. Let's just talk about the first one. Like, what we, what we actually thought about Ghost Rider? Uh, Ghost Rider was awesome, and Agents of Shield. Robbie Reyes is my favorite Ghost Rider in the comics, and he's my and he's way better than Nicolas Cage. <laughs> So, if you're watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. just for Ghost Rider, I think it's worth it. So That one episode of Ghost Rider is so much better than the two movies of Ghost Rider with Johnny Blaze. 
for sure. Oh, yeah. Nicholas Cage. For sure. Hey, he did play Johnny Plays, so that's. Yeah, I like Robbie. I've always liked Robbie. As my, he's my favorite Ghost Rider. I know he's the newest one, but he's still my favorite because his stories are probably better. Because Ghost Riders always had that problem. So anyway, uh, yeah, if you guys are watching Ghost Rider or Agents of Shield for Ghost Rider, yeah, enjoy it. I personally think Agents of Shield is an okay show. I don't think it's great. I know Luis. I know you love that show, but I have the right to a different opinion. I think it's just okay. I like season two it's more. Right, no, it's, it's okay. I know. Okay, I I'm like tired of the inhuman part. Yeah, I liked season two a lot. I'm not digging season three that much right now, and I'm watching it on Netflix. I'm just, it's, I'm just giving my opinion. I don't think it's been that great so far. It's kind of been boring me. I know. So. Yeah, I know. But I'm just sick of the Inhumans. Give me the mad mar, give me the magic stuff from Marvel. Oh wait, that's next month for Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Okay, so uh, we had our brief Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tangent that I didn't even know we were getting. <laughs> hmm. Okay, now the next question. Should we even bother reviewing, quote-unquote, reviewing Arrow, or should we no. just move on to Legends of Tomorrow? It's up no. to you. Skip. Skip. It. Skip. Letter grade F. Letter grade. Uh, letter grade. Season Laurel. The character of season is Laurel Lance. Um... Uh, <laughs> Letter grading. Honestly, she's won most of our character of the week. I've noticed. Uh, what were you saying, Luis? I mean, uh, for letter grading for Arrow, what's below F? An E. D. <laughs> I D G A F. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I give Arrow an N W. My butt cheek. I give Air No, it's not good enough. Arrow's not good enough for your for your one butt cheek. It's not worth anyone's butt cheek. Um I give Arrow an NW for not watched. <laughs> but it, and my character of the season is Laurel Lance. Now if I hear season five does bring back Laurel and they do redeem themselves, I'll watch it on Netflix. We'll watch. I'll watch it on Netflix. Especially since it'll be eight days after the finale. Yeah, exactly. I'll watch it on Netflix. But as of right now, nope. <laughs> I will watch the episode that Laurel comes back in. I will watch. I will watch that. I will do that to boost ratings and to give them a clear message. But until then, not watching it. I don't want to bother. So anyway, I think we should move on to Legends Three, of Tomorrow. Hero, Death, um, Character of the Week. Lower Lance and yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so enjoy SpongeBob Green Arrow. <laughs> Until we have to... watch SpongeBob SquarePants, it's better than that right now. <laughs> Didn't SpongeBob get canceled? No, that was a that, I I found that that was actually a fake. God damn it! What if that show is just gonna die? It keeps making money, so I don't know. <laughs> six and so. Oh God. Okay, but anyway, enjoy. <laughs> Until Arrow gets better, enjoy pictures of Green Arrow Spongebob on your screen. <laughs> or you might think of other things. Patrick Green Arrow. <laughs> Squidward Green Arrow. <laughs> Plankton if, Green Arrow. If you're listening to this, if, if Arrow comes on, watch porn for one hour. <laughs> no, don't do that because your phone gets hacked. Wait, what are you talking about? Wait, if who's watching this, don't watch Arrow, watch porn? Who are you talking to? <laughs> like, if you're listening to this podcast... Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> if you don't like Arrow, just watch porn. Dude, Arrow is so bad, it doesn't even have a porn parody. Hmm. Yeah, sure, I think it does. <laughs> I'm sure there's some all shipper out there who's having Ew. Oh my god. Okay, that's yeah, Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Let's fucking review this shit. We're gonna go start with episode one, which is titled Out of Time. In 2016, historian Nate Haywood enlists Mayor Oliver Queen's help in locating the Wave Rider after it was caught in a nuclear blast in 1942. The pair find 
sunken ship could only make aboard the in in stasis. Who, t- who tells them what happened after being revived. Rip's team, Mick, Ray, Sarah, Jefferson, and Martin travel through time, dealing with aberrations in history. They learn that a nuclear bomb would be dead. Bob? A nuclear bomb. Would be nuclear dead. bomb? <laughs> a nuclear bomb. Look, just because there's SpongeBob on the screen doesn't mean he's a nuke. <laughs> Okay, go on. Would be detonated in New York City in 1942. The team discovered that Damien Dark, working with the Nazis, was behind the attack. Sarah attempted to kill Dark to prevent Laurel's death, but Dark escaped and launched his st- his sole atomic bomb toward New York from a U-boat. Rip chose to scatter the team throughout time, except for the injured Mick, to save their lives while he intercepted the mom with the Rave Rider and saved New York. In the present, Nick and Nate use the Wave Rider to travel through time and rescue everyone, but fail to find any trace of Rick. After fixing events in 1942 to, to prevent Nazis from making a nuclear bomb, the team is confronted by the Justice Society of America. Meanwhile, Dark is shown working with Eobar Thawne. Um... I just watched this today, actually. That nuclear bob shit. Yeah, nuclear bob, dude. Character of the week, a nuclear bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, welcome to the nuclear bob podcast. <laughs> Okay, in all honesty, what did you guys think of this episode? I'm still kind of analyzing it right now. Um, I think Damien Duck was way better in this one episode than all of Arrow all of season Arrow. four. I don't believe it. Yeah. 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 Um. Hmm. Uh, I'm. I'm getting the impression Rip is gone. Like, me too. I think he'll be back. I hope he is, cause I kind of hope he is. Yeah, dude, that I thought that was such a wasted opportunity. Dude, what was the point of not the sacrificing himself? Characters in season one. Rip. Yeah. Was he the most well developed, or was he the most? I would say he was the most, but he was one of the most. I would say Captain Cold and Heatwave were more developed than him, but yeah. Oh yeah, but yeah, he was like the third. He started off as like a. You know, just like character that was there, and then we started getting more into his like story and stuff. You know, stories. Yeah. What was yeah. the? And if he's not coming back, what was the point of not sacrificing himself at the end of the season finale last year? Exactly. That's just a waste of time. And I'm not. Yeah. S- yeah. I don't know. I think Rip will be back. I think he'll be back. I hope he is. I think he will. Um. I mean, he's not listed as disease or anything. He's listed as unknown. Well, I can mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, um... Those goddamn nuclear bobs. Yeah, d- fucking nuclear bob. But anyway... <laughs> nuclear bob atomic pants. But anyway, um... This episode was okay. It wasn't... the best. It was just okay. Um... I... I don't... I don't really know what to say about Legends at this point. I felt like... I mean, I kind of find it funny that freaking Oliver Queen was there, and I'm like, why? Why is he here? I mean, be like, hey, Arrow still exists. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> hmm. Um, I'm just, I don't know. Like, I don't like what they turned Sarah into. I don't. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. They have I don't tur- They've turned Sarah into... A lesbian whore. Again, hi. Yeah. Oh, I got a bisexual woman on my show. Therefore, I'm gonna make her sleep with every woman. And I'm like, Mark. Mark. Fuck you. Seriously, just stop. 
okay. I don't like. Kill yourself. I don't like Sarah because. No, don't kill yourself, but. Don't kill yourself. Just qu quit. <laughs> yeah. And then kill yourself. I can't it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll hire nuclear bomb to take him out. <laughs> Do you believe this guy's a lawyer? No. I don't. I can't believe Mark Guggenheim is a lawyer, dude. I don't like what he's turned Sarah into. It's like, dude, do you really think I like Sarah Lance because she's a bisexual woman? I don't <laughs> fucking care about that shit. I really don't. I don't have much else to say. It, this was just an okay episode. There's not much else to say. Yeah. I'm going to give it a B-, and my character of the week is Nuclear Bob. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. Actually, I do have a legit... Nuclear... No, go for, go ahead, Luis. Nuclear Bomb is a character of the week. <laughs> uh, not Nuclear Bomb. Nuclear Bob. Yeah, Bob. I oh, am yeah, Nuclear Bob. I think a legit complaint I have is... I don't know, dude. Sarah just pissed me off. It, it just... Not just being a, a whore or being a slut. Just being... Mm -hmm. Just... I, I, she's just one of the most likable characters. It's just unlikable. And, Guggen, and she's suffering the Guggenheim effect. Yeah, she's suffering the Guggenheim. She's suffering Guggenheim point. Yeah, pretty much. I think my char my legit character is probably Damien Dark as... He was actually cool for once. Mm -hmm. Now this magic bullshit. Watch this commentator. Watch a comment's gonna be like, "Oh my god!" In Arrow season four, at the beginning of it, you thought Damian Dark was cool, and you thought he was one of the best villains. I'm like, "Yeah, that was before they fucked him up." <laughs> mm -hmm. so anyway, um, that's about it. What do you guys think? Who's your letter grading? In I like that. I like that. Um, historian guy. What's his name again? Um, Haywood. Hey, hey, uh, yeah. Eh, he's okay. Oh, it's pretty cool. He's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like. That, I like that. Uh, you, you got an ass kicked by Sarah. I think most people would. Most people get their ass kicked by Sarah. Yeah. The only person who probably kicked Sarah's ass is Nuclear Bob. Yeah, dude. Not even the Flash can beat her. <laughs> Sarah's become a, the new Mary Sue. <laughs> But anyway, all right, Brandon. Who's your? What's your letter grading in your character? I think I'm gonna go with a solid B. All right. I mean, I think it was too bad. The only thing that really pissed me off was Sarah. Yeah. Who's your character? My character of the week it had to be Damien Dark. Yeah. Yeah, we're still gonna continue that trend. <laughs> Oh God, Luis! Letter grading. Who's your character? Yeah, he's probably gonna pick Damien Dark. I don't know. I think mine is between Damien or Rip. Please pick Rip. <laughs> now pick whoever you want. Rip. Yeah, I think I'll take Rip. Yeah. And what's your letter grading? A B. Yeah, B because Sarah. Yeah, Sarah. I don't like her portrayal so far pretty unlikable right now seriously dude the team is getting fucking shot at they could be killed and what's she doing she's fucking the queen of england <laughs> like where's sarah or france you or... see her like uh oh like are you serious i'm just like really okay it was the f okay it was french it was france not england you get the fucking point it's like Really, your team's getting shot at. You could be killed. You could be changing history right now. But no, I gotta get... I can't keep my snooch in my pants. <laughs> like, fuck off. It gets worse next episode, too, if in case you guys are wondering. In my opinion. Alright, Brandon, give us the Justice Society. We've been waiting all couple of months because of them. Episode 2, The Justice Society of America. Maybe they, they should just rename the show that. one because Wikipedia decided not to upload a synopsis. Oh, come on. 
The legends travel to Nazi-occupied Paris, but find themselves surrounded by the Justice Society of America. The legends discover a time aberration that threatens the JSA, but the JSA wants nothing to do with them or their help. I don't blame them. The legends force the way into the JSA's mission to intercept and seize a mysterious package. Nate is desperate to prove that he should be part of the team, but he has a secret that he shares with his grandfather, Commander Steele, that might to make it difficult. Ray is so focused on impressing the JSA, he puts himself and Vixen in danger. Meanwhile, Stein has stepped in as the leader with Ripgod, but when decisions aren't being made, Sarah seems to be the one calling shots. Mary Sue! <laughs> mm-hmm. um, wow, they left the part where they went and found them all. Or was that the first episode where they went and found them? That was the first episode when they found them all. Oh, okay, I like that one. Oh, then I am thinking of the one. Yeah, I was I was talking about the one where Sarah was she was now sleeping with people in Salem. I went oh Salem. Damn it! Yeah, she's I ju- a witch. I just witch hunter, that, that was episode one. I just went son of a bitch, girl. Stop. <laughs> like, I don't care. Do that shit in the present, okay? But you could seriously screw up the timeline just because you can't keep it in your pants. I- it's fucking annoying. <laughs> Like if you, Sarah, if you want to have sex with a girl, just sleep with Nissa. Come on. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Just quit being, a, just quit being a whore. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, was Sarah, no Sarah wasn't like this in the last season. No, she wasn't. She had, she did have a girl. I think she. I, think I do she's remember just that. Depressed I she's, that. Um, I think she's more depressed. Laura's than Laura's dead. Dead. But still. I'd rather have. But she she did she did turn a uh, lesbian in uh, season one. Okay. Because there was this one chick towards the end that she kind of had a crush on. Oh yeah, the nurse. I remember that. Yeah, the nurse. So anyway. Also, Luis has told us that Sarah will have a crush on Supergirl. Why? Why? <sighs> Stop off, Guggenheim. Why? <laughs> Well, oh, come on, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm on this is just yeah, fiction yeah. for crying out loud. <laughs> Does Guggenheim have children? I know. I'm legitimately scared if he does. <laughs> okay, but anyway. Uh, just Society. Okay, guys, we've been waiting for the JSA. What did you think of them? Honestly, surprise, spoiled. They already killed off one of them. Yeah, dude, they killed off our man. Yeah. We didn't even get to see him use any of his powers. Yeah. Like, so we, I was hoping he would steal reverse the Flash's powers. Okay, that's not going to happen. <laughs> the point, he's about to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> but, that was disappointing. Um, that I felt, pissed me off. I felt you like... Off one of them that quick. Yeah, dude. I feel like the only ones they focused on were Vixen, uh... Commander Steel and Our Man. I think everyone else they just kind of left there. Like even Star Girl got what, like three lines. Mm-hmm. Like the only thing, the only thing that Star Girl contributed, besides special effects and looking good, was 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 Jax saying how hot she was. That's it. Yeah. That's all Star Girl contributed and. Uh, Dr. Midnight didn't really do much, and the other guy, I don't remember his name right now. Obsidian? Obsidian, yeah, thank you. They didn't really do much either. Um, also, dude, I'm not gonna lie, the special effects for the guy who was on roids. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was kind of, Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> like, TV special... Hulk, Hulk. Hulk. Yeah, I know, I'm just like, uh... These special effects are kind of... The Nazi version of the Hulk? (laughs) Yeah, Nazi Hulk. And they even had... Nazi DC Hulk. And they even had Super Serum. And they mentioned Super Soldiers. I'm like, okay, guys, calm down. (laughs) We're getting into Captain America territory. (laughs) Um... But yeah, anyway, I'm kind of disappointed by the JSA. I hope they come back, because I didn't get to see enough of them. I would be really mad if... Are, are like listed. Is Stargirl still there? 
Uh, I don't know why I'm so concerned with Stargirl. Do not see her. Oh, come on. I do see Vixen. I really only see Vixen, actually. Are you kidding me? Let's see, check the cast. Dude, Vixen. I will be so mad if they ignore the rest of the JSA after hyping them up. Vixen. Person. Person. Adam. Yeah, the others are listed as recur as recurring. So Stargirl, Midnight, Doctor Midnight, and uh, I forgot his name again. I'm sorry. Obsidian. Obsidian. Thank you, Brennan. All right, what'd you guys think of this episode? I think it was better than the first one, but I couldn't really see that much. It's I am very disappointed. I don't know why. Um, I just, I think Legends is in this awkward state where people didn't really like it that much, and they're trying to figure out what they can do, and they don't know what they want to do. Um, I just, I think they have to focus more on the JSA, and I think they have to, I think they just gotta go gung-ho on this JSA thing, and they just need to establish the, uh... God, what's the name of that evil group they were going to introduce? Uh, Legion of Doom? Legion of Doom. Thank you, Brandon. I think they just got to focus more on them instead of teasing us, because I don't really know who the main villains are. Dark. It's supposed to be Dark. And Yborg Thon. Captain Cold. Dark Archer. And Captain Cold. Okay, with the exception of Reverse Flash, um, okay. the JSA could kick their ass pretty easily. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Stargirl could kick their ass with their fucking staff. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, we're done. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. Overall, guys, I just think Legends in this awkward phase right now. It just started, so let's give it some slack. But overall, right now, it's kind of forgetful. Right now, it's just kind of there. Mm -hmm. It needs to. Do you? Th okay, this is a legit and honest question. Do you think there will be a season three of Legends of Tomorrow? Don't give me Depends. a. Don't, I, think, I think it's too early. Don't give me. Don't give me a. I want a season three. No. Do you legitimately think, in your heart of hearts, do you think there will be? I honestly don't know because what are they gonna do? I, don't, I really don't know. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think there will be. What do you think? You look at. I think there won't be. I don't think there will be. I mean, look at the rating for the yeah. season premiere. 1.8 1.8 million viewers Wait, does this mean Arrow did bad. worse? Yeah, that means Arrow did better Because I think it was a 1.9 Yeah, but Arrow or did one, No, 1.89 was Arrow's premiere That's pretty bad, dude So, yeah Honestly I I want to see the show get better I, I do, I think it's got enjoyable moments I'm feeling something's missing. I feel like the lack of Captain Cold is really hurting the show. I don't really miss Hawk Girl. I don't think anyone does. I don't think anyone misses Hawk Girl. <laughs> uh, I feel so bad. Hey, for season one of uh, Legends, I was really hoping more of um, Hawk Man than Hawk Girl. Right? But no, fuck Hawk Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't like the Hawk Peak character. I don't like the Hawk characters in general, to be honest with you, but I, I see where Luis is coming from, but... Brandon, stop. But anyway... What? You were, like, sniffing into your mic. Oh, sorry. But anyway... I'm just trying to stretch. But anyway, yeah, okay. Letter grading and character of the week. I gotta go to something in an hour. Uh, I'm gonna say, again, a B. It was your character. No one really stands out. I'm sorry to say this. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's kind of heart, heart to heart between Nate and his grandfather. You can go with Commander Steel. Or you can go with Nate if you want. Luis, is that who you're going to pick? Yeah, I like Yeah. I do like the gimmick with Nate, though, is that he's a hemo... He has a hemo... Fuck, what the name is it? The blood clot disorder. I like that. That's an interesting... Hemo something, yeah. Yeah, it's an actual... 
blood clot disorder in real life, and I really like that they're doing that. I think that's an interesting thing that we haven't really... That's never been done before, so I I really like that idea from him. You know what? I'm probably going to go with Commander Steel. I think out of all the JSA members, he was probably the most memorable. Vixen? I'm not going to lie, guys. I like that... I like Vixen from Arrow more. Shocking. Oh my, dun, dun, dun. Oh my god, an opinion. <laughs> oh, god, actually Vixen likes looks really brilliant. from Arrow more. Yeah, what were you saying, Luis? Sorry, just like the current Vixen um, that we saw in Legends, she looks really familiar. You can look her up on it's IMDb. Like I've seen her in the show. You can look her up on IMDb. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to go with yeah. Commander Steel. My letter grading is going to be probably a B. I mean, I'm excited to see the JSA. I hope they do more with them. So far, they were pretty fucking forgettable, dude. Um, mm-hmm. They got to improve the show. I think they just, I think the show just has to not hold back and just go gung-ho. I feel like they have to. And yes, that includes if, and yes, if we're fighting Nazis, yes, I want to see more Nazi characteristics. Yes, that may include racism, but guess what? They're Nazis. Fuck them. <laughs> but anyway, what what do you what what do you got? Who's your characters? And your I know your character is I know your letter grading is a B, Brandon. What about you, Luis? Who's your character in your letter grading? Same. He also picks Commander Steel. Then what about you, Brandon? Same. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's about it for Legends of Tomorrow. We hope it gets better. Okay, out of all of these shows, which one is doing the best right now? I got to be honest with you, dude. Arrow's being pretty fucking go good right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Arrow for sure, dude. Best episodes. Yeah. Nah, reality Supergirl. Really? You think Supergirl is the best looking show out of all of these Supergirl right now? Supergirl so far right now. I, I agree with Brandon. <laughs> I think Flash is off to a kind of iffy start, and Supergirl's been good for the past two weeks through and through. I'm super excited. I, I'm excited for Supergirl. <laughs> what about you, Luis? Supergirl, yeah. All right. What can Flash do to improve itself, then? I think most of us were probably no thinking... Savitar. No Savitar. And what else? No Savitar. <laughs> Not... Not that many. Oh man, filler. They need to fix that. No, oh, yeah, no, the filler. No, please stop with the fillers. For yeah, don't go. Don't focus that much on filler. So, all right, that's about it. I'm gonna cut your guys' audio off. Do you want to say bye to our lovely audience and thank them for their patience as well? Later. This was a ride for us. But later. <laughs>